We only got one Monday night game tonight, but it's going to be a fun one. The Kansas City Chiefs versus the New Orleans Saints. And this one's going to be a puzzle to project for these players. But when we deep dive the numbers, it's going to be interesting to look at nonetheless. But most of you guys already have your lineup set. You guys made your decision going into Sunday with your teams. And you're just trying to see what happens for Monday night. The thing is, you need to drop what you need from your players in the comment section below. How many points you need to get up, to stay up, or whatever it is. And we're going to bust out the rally caps to help you out. That's what we're going to try to do as a community in the comment section. Everybody rallying together to help each other out to get those fancy points. Also, you need to click that subscribe button right now because we're deep diving matchups. We're helping you set your lineups. We're going to go deep on the waiver wire. Tuesdays, we go deep at wide receiver and running back. 20 players plus a piece on those positions. Wednesday, we go waiver wire again, and we do deep dives on the players with the unique series, all the trending players and topics with that one. Click that button. Stop missing out. Do not disappoint Ric Flair. He's watching you. But this is an interesting matchup between the Saints and the Chiefs. The Chiefs can lock it down on defense, but the Saints have the firepower, and they're built in the right ways to push the Chiefs. So this is going to be an interesting matchup. Vegas has a 43 over under. And this is one of those matchups that could go either way. But the potential here, even if it does go either way, should deliver fantasy results in our lineups for us. We should see multiple players do well in fantasy. We might see a couple busts. That's just part of the game. But this should be a good matchup overall for fantasy football. Whether it hits the over, whether it's right at 43 on DraftKings or the under, it should be a good matchup for fantasy football because these two teams, when you look at how they're built, they match up perfectly for good, fun football on the field. And they have not played against each other since 2020. And they've only played against each other a handful of times since 1972. The Chiefs are 7-5 and five against the Saints since 1972. That being said, when we're looking at this matchup. This is going to be a fun Monday nighter. We'll just say that. And we're looking at both these quarterbacks. And we're looking at this team in a neutral game script. They like to be dead even if possible when it comes to running and throwing the ball. Moderate pacing with these quarterbacks. Most people who have Mahomes is starting him. And also, if you got Derek Carr, he's more of a matchup play for you. And some people are going against Carr due to the matchup. And some people are leaning into Carr due to the matchup. And I can make a case for both points there. But usually, a lot of people have other quarterbacks they're starting. He's not considered like a top 10 guy. But he can score in top 10 production. Something to look at here. And when you look at the defenses here, both of them will allow fancy points to quarterbacks. Both of them will do that, but they're also very tricky when it comes to defending the pass. That's why this game's a puzzle to look at, and I love analyzing games like this. And we're looking at Alvin Kamara here, and he has been good this season. Three out of four games, he was an RB1. And the Chiefs here has been locked down at the running back position. But look at week one. Look at Justice Hill. Remember that game in week one. Remember when everybody was running to the waiver wire after week one to get Justice Hill. How was he used? He was used in the passing game. They just tried to get the ball out to him quickly out in the flats to try and get him in space to get yards after the catch because the Chiefs are locking down the wide receivers and the tight ends. So they try to get the ball out quickly to their ancillary pass catchers. That's something we might see with Alvin Kamara, which we will see with Alvin Kamara, and matches up perfectly with how this game could be played. I look for Alvin Kamara to get used in the passing game. I look for him to be great in PPR. I think I'd be kind of scary if it's non-PPR standard. I'd be a little bit scared of that because you're not going to get those catches racked up. But he should be getting receiving yards. And... If that works, and they're able to stretch it out to other factors of the field, because Kamara is a lot better than Justice Hill. 
because that could allow the Saints to stretch things out to other positions and really maneuver the defense here if they can get the well to break. And Alvin Kamara is that pin that could bust the balloon here. And if he does, that'll open up other positions. Alvin Kamara is a big piece to this offense. Alvin Kamara could be the reason why some of the other fancy players don't hit. That is the reason why we're looking at Alvin Kamara. I look for him to get good volume in this matchup. Let the chips lay after that. But I look for him to get good volume in the past game in this matchup. And now we're looking at Rashid Jaheed and Chris Olave. And going back to Alvin Kamara. If he can really hit in the flat and get you yards after the catch and be good in the passing game to keep the chains moving, this could allow for these two wide receivers to get some separation downfield and get those targets. On top of that, they're getting the deep ball. Rashid Shahid's getting a 26% target share and 10.1 average depth of target. Chris Olave, 11 average depth of target and a 24% target share. They're going to stretch it downfield, deep downfield to the intermediate. If they can break one loose, they can splash on you. There is a lot of risk here. You look at the wide receivers that hit on the Chiefs this year. Zay Flowers, kind of like short volume, just 11.1 .1 PPR fancy points. Yoshi got some work because they were locking down Chase. Drake London, 18.7. Drake London got a lot of volume. Lad McConkie. Getting a lot of targets out of the slot in the short to intermediate. That being said, if these two wide receivers were on any other offense, we'd be very scared. But Alvin Kamara, if he can break loose in the passing game and keep things moving, this will give these two wide receivers more opportunities. These two wide receivers are not 100% certain to hit. They are kind of risky, but they also got some upside. They're boom bust plays for this week, but still the volume in this matchup and how the Saints are built could attack the Chiefs good enough for them to sneak through. For the well to break, for the bubble to pop, I could see one of these guys doing something this week. And now we're looking at the tight ends. And I'm going to say tight ends here. Jawan Johnson, everybody's hitching their wagon to, which is great. I look for him to get targets and opportunity. On top of that, tight ends will tight end. And that means that he could get opportunity score you six fantasy points and still be one of the top tight ends in fantasy but not help you in actual fantasy football but we're also looking at foster moreau and the reason why we're looking at him is we're looking at isaiah likely here in week one we're looking at will disley we're looking at this defense here they'll lock down the primary pass catchers and then teams like to go to the ancillary guys against them. That's the best way to do it. Get out quick to those ancillary pass catchers. So Moro might sneak some targets. I would not be starting him for traditional fantasy football. It's just not logical. However, for daily fantasy football, if you're in a deep tournament and you're looking for a contrary play, maybe, maybe. I don't feel good about it, but if I'm setting a bunch of lineups, then I'm going to have them sprinkled in. But Jawan Johnson should be getting work. He's getting a short average depth of target here of 6.5. Those shorter eight out pass catchers, usually against the Chiefs, are getting that work, getting opportunity as they're locking down wide receivers. If you're looking at these tight ends, you're looking at Johnson. Johnson's also in a game script here where it can push enough for him to get opportunity. And you're looking at what the Chiefs are doing against tight end. However, their last three games, 44.6 fantasy points more than league average of 14.3 per game PPR. And the reason why is they're locking down wide receivers. Teams are going to the short to intermediate part of the field. So if those wide receivers are getting locked down, then the tight ends are going to get looks. And they've been known to shut down the main tight end, and you have to go to the second tight end. That being said, that's something to pay attention to. Another thing you want to pay attention to week one, Mark Andrews is not Mark Andrews, and we've seen that the whole season coming back from last year's injury, and Isaiah likely is very good. So this is not a one-for-one -one scenario, but you're also seeing teams go to ancillary pass catchers. It's not backup tight end for backup tight end. More ancillary pass catchers for ancillary pass catchers. So be on the lookout for that. And also I want to cover the Saints passing game because their trend matches up with the Chiefs here. They like to go deep with their two wide receivers, Olave and Shahid, and let them rack up the target share. And if they're not getting it done downfield 
or the coverage has it over top, then they're going to the short game. Alvin Kamara, Foster Moreau, Johnson, they're just going shorts. And they can do that. They got a running back that can break it free in the flat. And you got to account for them over top. So there's going to be space underneath. So the Chiefs and Saints offensively and defensively match well to make some good music in the sheets. That's what I'm saying here. There should be some fun football to watch. But we're looking at the Chiefs running backs here. Isaiah Pacheco is out. He's still out. He ain't coming back. Carson Steele fumbled last week and lost his job pretty much. He is in the doghouse. Then Kareem Hunt stepped in and did good. He did good. He is the hot hand. And that's about all the analysis we can say out of this backfield. He is the hot hand going into this week. And what we know about going into last week, even though Carson Steele was the hot hand, they mentioned that they did not know what they wanted to do with this backfield. And they alluded to us that was more of an in-game decision of what they're going to do when splitting up the carries. They also said they did not like how Steele was protecting the football. They also wanted to see him do better in pass protection. Andy Reid mentioned that right after that game, even though Carson Steele looked good in that moment, and then he comes out the next week and fumbles. Kareem Hunt is reliable, steady, good in this role. He's a veteran. He's good enough to get the job done. He should be getting opportunity. And Samaji Piran will probably just be sandwiched in between these running backs, getting enough opportunity for you to look at and say, huh, huh, because he could score a touchdown on any given week like he did last week. And Kareem Hunt, he's just got to stay hot. He's just got to not mess up. And it may not even be his fault because all it takes is a missed assignment from a couple offensive linemen, a bad series runs out, and they flip around these running backs. So again, there's a little bit of a wild card here. I like Kareem Hunt in the backfield like everybody else because that is what the signs are saying. But also, I'm also recognizing the ambiguity here with these running backs and what the coaching staff saying. Kareem Hunt's the hot hand. Don't get those words twisted, and he's looking good. He just has to continue doing what he's doing. But you can score fantasy points on the Saints. Week one and two, remember, those were blowouts, and you cannot really count that really because it's not even close to a neutral game script. They blew out the Cowboys. They blew out the Panthers. You're not running the ball when you're down that much. You got against Philly. Saquon Barkley went off. Saquon Barkley has that speed. They locked him down for a bit. And remember, he had that long run in the back end of the game. And then against Atlanta, Bijan did okay. And the Chiefs got the firepower for the running back that's getting the work to do okay, which is more than likely Kareem Hunt. Now we're looking at the wide receivers here. And we got a bag of wide receivers that could do everything. Xavier Worthy, start, sit decisions versus the Sunday guys. I would say normally the guy that you trust getting the targets, you're starting over Worthy unless you needed the pure upside. The pure upside with Worthy is grand, glorious, wide receiver 1-esque, top tier wide receiver 1 because he can blow up on any given week. Targets could go anywhere. And if you want to look at pure upside for daily fantasy football, Justin Watson, he's deep ball city. He's going to get more routes ran. He's going to be on the field more. He's going to stretch it. He's always been their deep ball guy for the last few years. And if he brings in one or two of those, that could be a huge game for you. He's not a guy in traditional leagues you want to start. He's a guy in traditional leagues that you're gambling with your starts because on any given Sunday, he could hit. I like him best for like 16 team leagues because the waiver wire is decimated and you got to make a gamble somewhere if you're decimated. And if he hits, he hits. And if he doesn't, guess what? The rest of the waiver wire is decimated. What, what's it worth? And it's him versus waiver wire wide receivers and backup wide receivers, not him versus Jamar Chase. And when you look at it at that aspect, if he busts, he's only a few points off from the good waiver wire wide receivers. However, the odds of him hitting... And this scenario might be like once out of every five games, kind of like a Rashid Shahid last year. And that's something you may want to look at. Juju Smith-Schuster might be used in the short game a little bit more here. 
something we want to see more in a larger sample. Sky Moore, not pictured because I can't fit him in here. Same thing, he's been on the field all year, just not getting workload and opportunity. The wide receiver I want is Xavier Worthy. And I'm starting him in a lot of leagues unless I'm jacked at wide receiver, which I'm always jacked at wide receiver. And I may have other guys to look at that I trust more with targets. Xavier Worthy has a ton of upside every given week. He's a good upside gamble. He is a good upside gamble that's pushing being reliable right now and should be more reliable throughout the season. The Saints are about league average when it comes to allowing fantasy points to wide receivers. They're bend but don't break, so we should expect something from one of these wide receivers. Of course, Travis Kelsey, he's going to get volume. He's going to get targets underneath, and you're starting him because look at the field at tight end anyways. It's horrible. It's gross. But Travis Kelsey's got a lot of upside in this matchup still. Due to the nature of his volume, he was slow this season, not racking up fancy points. Did okay last week, but that's the tight end spot too. That's how the cookie crumbles. This offense can be slower volume than expected sometimes, especially in certain game scripts. That's why this game is a fun puzzle. This could be a low scoring game or it could be a high scoring game. But the factor is really Alvin Kamara. If he breaks loose, that's going to have to push the pace everywhere else. And that is what we're looking at here. Alvin Kamara is that guy that we're watching in this matchup. Because if he hits, a lot of other players are going to hit on both ends of the field. The Chiefs and the Saints. He is the guy to pay attention to here. If he can connect, get yards after the catch in the short game, then that's going to allow... Chris Olave and Rashid Zahid to get those deep pass attempts and get more opportunities there. And that's going to push the game script more. And that will push the Chiefs a little bit more there. And then we can get a higher paced game out of this. If the Chiefs can lock down the passing game for the Saints, and they're usually locked down on the run game, then this could be an uglier game, but still have good fantasy implications but a little bit less of the players, less of the ancillary players will have lesser odds to be able to hit for you. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Let's bust out them rally caps. I want to thank you for watching. Catch you on the next video.